I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Matthew Johnson, and I am the pastor here at Glencoe United Methodist Church, and welcome to worship. I am both thankful and blessed that you have decided to join us for worship today. And though we've already worshiped this morning in person, we, we thought it was important that we share with you this opportunity online to worship with us. So no matter where you are, no matter what time it is, no matter what you're wearing, no matter what you're doing, now is an opportunity that you can join us in worshiping the Lord our God. Now, if you would like to learn more about us here at Glencoe, our church, you can visit our website at www.glencoeumc.org or the description below. And if you would like to keep up with all the ministry opportunities that we got going on here at the church, feel free to like, comment, follow, subscribe on our social media platforms. You can see them on the screen now. And if you would like to be on our email list to kind of keep up with what's happening, prayer requests and all that good stuff, as well as the worship service will be emailed out every Sunday, then go to the description below and sign up at the link. Now, friends, with all of this in mind, let us now enter into a time of worship together. God in prayer as we open worship this day. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we come before you on this rainy day to sit here and listen to your word speak to us, to hear your spirit flow through us and tell us what we need to do, to tell us how we need to live, to tell us about what this new year is going to bring, as well as to tell us what last year meant to us. Oh God, you speak to us in so many ways filling us with reflective abilities so that way we can grow closer to you. May your spirit and your grace continue to work within us, work around us, and continue to work in this world so that way it can be transformed into the kingdom that you would want it to be, to be a place of peace, love, hope, and joy, to be the loving kingdom that you live in, to be the place that you deserve to have here on earth as us, as your people, as your followers. Lord, we ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, in which we pray. Amen. Our opening scripture today comes from the prophet Isaiah, and it's from the 60th chapter, the first six verses. I'm reading from the Common English Bible today. So hear now the word of God, friends. Arise, shine, your light has come. The Lord's glory has shone upon you, and through the darkness covers the earth and the gloom of the nations. The Lord will shine upon you. Nations will come to your light, and kings will to your dawning radiance. Lift up your eyes and look around. They are all gathered, and they have come to you. Your sons will come from afar, and your daughters on caregivers' hips. When you, then you will see and be radiant. Your heart will tremble and open wide, and because the sea's abundance will be turned over to you, the nation's wealth will come to you. Countless camels will cover your land, young camels from Midian and Ephah, and they will all come from Sheba, carrying gold and incense proclaiming the Lord's praises. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Gracious and merciful God, we come before you humbly and ask that you be with us each and every day. We humbly ask that you give us the, the blessing of good health and safety. And we also are thankful for the blessing of family and friends and this church. Lord, as we go about our lives, we understand that life is fragile and that life is filled with many blessings that you've given us, but it is also filled with many difficult and challenging times. During those challenging times, we look to you, we turn to you for help, we turn to you for comfort, we turn to you for healing, we turn to you for all that you can give us because we know that, oh Lord, you can do all things. So let us always remember to come to you. Let us always remember to to seek you out during the difficult times. Today we have lifted up many names and many families. Please be with them. Give them your peace and give them comfort during their times of grieving, during their times of illness. Let us, let us pray that you go and touch them with your healing touch because you are the great physician. Let us go and, and always seek out ways to be there for them as blessings to them in their lives as they are blessings to us in our lives. Because, the Lord, you send us out to be there for one another. You send us out to be there for each other in all the ways that we can. Because, of oh God, you are working within us as well as around us. So may we continue to be blessings to those that we lift up to you today with our prayers. But, oh Lord, we also lift up these praises. Because we know that you are excited to hear the praises that we have. We know that you always want to hear us praise you in all that we do, and in, in the moments in which we are having better uh, times in life, when things are going right, oh God, you, you give us reason to be joyful. You give us reason to sing and to dance and to worship you. You give us reason to call out to you and tell you, oh Lord, thank you. You give us reason to love. You give us reason to hope. You give us reason to have all these things. And Lord, as we lift up these praises today, whether they're anniversaries or celebrations of any sort, may you be there and bless that time and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, as we go about our days from henceforth, may we continue to keep our eyes on you. Look out for that light that shines in the darkness to be guided by you because you are our guide, our wisdom. You are our vision. Oh Lord, we ask all these things through your son, Jesus Christ, in which we celebrate the season of Christmas and remember the resurrection at Easter. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me as we bless the offering this day? Let us pray. Oh Lord, it is a new year and a new opportunity to serve you. Lord, as we give you these gifts of offerings and tithes, may we remember the blessings that you have bestowed upon us in our lives, whether they are monetary and physical, tangible things, or they are intangible, the relationships that we have with each other, the relationship with you, O oh God. Lord, as we come before you today, may we humbly submit ourselves as offerings, as living sacrifices to you in all that we do, and be your faithful servants. And as we start this new year, May we start afresh. May we set afire this world with your Holy Spirit with a whole new meaning of what it means to follow you through all that we do. We say this, we pray this, we believe this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from the gospel of St. Matthew. And we're once again reading from the Common English Bible, the, first, the second chapter, the first 12 verses. Will you stand as you are able for the gospel reading, please? After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the newborn king of the Jews? And we've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. And when King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all of the chief priests and the legal experts and asked them where was where the Christ was to be born. And they said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are 
are you least among the rulers of Judea, Judah? Because from you will come one who, who governs, who will shepherd my people. And then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time where the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. And when you found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. And when they heard the king, they went and looked. And the star they sent had, see, had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. And they entered this house with a, and a small child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. And then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a, because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, friends. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. You can't tell the Christmas story without talking about the Magi. You can't tell the Christmas story without talking about the paranoid and ruthless King Herod. You cannot talk about the Christmas story without mentioning the star in the east. And you cannot, cannot talk about the Christmas story or tell it without remembering that these people who were not Jewish, they were not Christian or anything like that, they were from other lands, they were foreigners, and they came to worship the newborn king and gave gifts only worthy of a king. When I see this story every year, I always think about it, and I think about how beautiful the story is. I think about how nice it is to think about what it means to give in such a way that is just very selfless. If you think about it, these people had no reason, truly, to go and give these gifts. They were not you know, bound to this. They were not required to do this. It's, it was not an understood that they had to, but instead they saw it and they knew something was special about this star. They knew that something magical. They knew that this star represented something greater. And so they gave of themselves, not just their gifts, their offerings, but they also offered up their time themselves. If you think about it, any time we go on a, a pilgrimage, any time we go somewhere, we're taking our time to do that. Every time you take time out of your Sunday to come to church, you're taking time out of your day that you could be doing something else. Maybe you could be cleaning. Maybe you could be sleeping because you don't get enough sleep. Maybe you could be spending time with family that is not here or spending time with family in a different way. Maybe you could be eating during this time. I don't know when your eating schedule is on a normal basis. There are many things that you could be doing, but instead you come here to give yourself to God on this Sunday and those Sundays that you've also come. When you come to serve, whether it is on a committee, whether it is to do service here at the church, whether it is to do service in the community, whether it is to do something physical out in the community to help others, you are giving up of your time and your talents to do so. This is important because God asks of us to give ourselves, to be servants, to lead by example, to be the ones that we need to be to help others see who God is. God wants us to let the light within us shine. When I read this story, and it always reminds me of the star being a light in the sky. Think about this. How many times have you went outside at night, whether to walk a dog, to take a walk in general, just to go outside and marvel in nature, to go outside and cool off because your house is too hot and you don't want to freeze your spouse or your children, or that you have to get away from family for just a minute and you need to take a breath somewhere else and it might be outside at night when you have people gathered. I've been there, done that. 
When you go outside, it is a different feeling when the sky is clear and you see the stars. When you live further from a city, there's less light pollution and you get to see the sky all so much brighter. But then there are the days in which things are not so visible. The clouds are there at night and what do you see? It's hard to see. You see a lot of darkness. You don't see the moon necessarily. You don't see the stars necessarily. And those nights are darker. They're darker. There's not that light in the sky to brighten up the area around you. It makes it harder to see, harder to be. It's, it, when I was growing up, this is just a true fact. I was afraid of the dark, very afraid of the dark. It was so bad that I could not go to sleep without a TV on. And to this day, I don't sleep in the dark. Not that I necessarily can't, but it's unnerving to me. It's also unnerving for folks who go out in, in the dark at night because you don't know what is around you, right? We have coyotes around. We, if you live in certain areas, there are other animals such as cougars or bears. Some dogs are rabid or some dogs are just flat out mean and they can hurt you. Just because they can. Sometimes there are other unforeseen dangers. If it's dark outside and you're stepping out into your yard, how do you know where the holes are? You don't know if there's been a groundhog there trying to dig a hole and you didn't see it. You don't know if some other creature's been digging a hole in your yard necessarily. The darkness is a dangerous place. It's a place where we can get lost. I can't tell you how many times when I was in the Boy Scouts, I went out into the woods because when you have to go, when nature calls, you got to go. If it's at night when everybody's asleep and it's dark, you've got to go. Can't tell you how many times I was paranoid and walked very far from camp only to get turned around a little bit because the fire was no longer lit. Everyone was sound asleep. All I could see was woods. Life is a dark place. Even when you go to the cities, after being in Atlanta for so long, friends, I also see the darkness in cities. Think about it. How, how many times can you say, say that you safely wanted to go out at night in a city? Cities are dangerous places even at night when there's sunlight because it's darker. Less people are out. And oftentimes, those who are going to do harm choose to be cloaked in darkness because that is safer for them and less safe for us. Life is a dark place, friends. But God, God gave us a light. God gave us the star. God gave us the, the, the path forward. If you think about it, the, the, the uh, Magi's followed this star, almost like a spotlight. Have you ever, did, does anybody here recollect Batman? Some of you might not, but if you know anything about Batman, they would put the bat signal up in the air, indicating that help is needed. And what would he do? He would go. God put up the spotlight because he wanted people to know help is on the way. To give us hope. To show us that the future is not as dark and as bleak as we might think. <clears throat> the reality is life is very scary. It's filled with many things, whether it's diseases, War, famine, you name it. But God is on our side. God gives us the strength to move forward. And God is our light, showing us the path. I oftentimes, when I read this passage, think to myself, when I go out in the dark, I have to carry a flashlight. It is safer. It shows me the way to go. It keeps me in the light. 
the star that shone bright in the sky. It was the light that guided the Magi. And in, in that same light now resides within each and every one of us. Jesus says, you are the light. And nothing can contain it. Nothing can prevent it from being seen. Because you are like a city on a hill. Friends, we hold the light of God in our hearts. We hold the light of Christ within us. We let our light shine when we follow what Jesus tells us. When we listen to God and God's words. When we feel the Holy Spirit working within us and around us. And we feel this urge to do something. Have you ever had that urge where... You really didn't want to do something, but you felt that little push in the back of your mind or in the back of your gut. Oh, I need to really do this. Well, friends, I will tell you today, tomorrow, yesterday, every day that I am a firm believer. That is the Holy Spirit punching you in the back. In, your, in the back of your mind, get up and do. In the back of your gut, you need to get up. Our motivation, our conscience, our inspiration... When we read this story, we need to remember that the Magi, people who did not believe in Jewish tendencies and Jewish customs or laws, that they were probably astronomers. And they were looking to the sky for signs. And they saw this and saw something that they could not explain for sure. But they knew that it meant here comes the new Christ. Here comes the new king. And so what did they do? They searched it out. They went and sought out this king. And they asked King Herod, where is he? And what did Herod do? Herod pushed back. Herod was afraid. Herod was jealous. Herod was paranoid. And what did he do? He tried to harm Jesus. It says that he had bad intents even though he lied to them and said, I want to honor him too. And we know this is true. Likewise, in the world today, friends, the dark seeks us out to hurt us. It's harmful. It's problematic. Only the light can keep us safe. The light shines and shows us the intruders. The light shines and shows us the dangers that surrounds us. The light shines and shows us exactly where we need to go and how we need to move forward. I want you to think about this. If you've ever been camping and it's nighttime and you go for a stroll and you do take a flashlight, do you take the path or do you take the woods? Do you seek out where it's more dangerous or do you go the path that is set before you to be safer. I don't know about you. Can't speak for you. But I typically take a path. Because I don't want to break my ankle. I don't want to miss something that's, hit, that's lurking behind the trees or in the brush. I want to make sure I can find my way back. Friends, as we go about our lives and see the darkness that surrounds us, whether it's due to COVID, due to the state of our world <clears throat> politically, through violence, through any other uh, illness, through the famines, through anything, friends, we need to seek God out. We need to look for that light and follow that light. Because when you're stuck in the darkness, friends, what happens? You get lost. When you get stuck in the darkness, friends, there are dangers that lurk. When you get stuck in the darkness, hope seems to dissipate. Fear starts to rise. I get unnerved in the dark. That sticks with me. The question I have for you is, when you're in the dark, how do you feel? What is that feeling that goes within you? 
What are you led to do to get out of the darkness? Or are you led out of the darkness? Are you seeking it out? Sometimes, friends, it's easier to close our eyes and pretend that things around us are okay. Sometimes, friends, it is, a, it is easier to stay in our comfort of our own homes. Sometimes, friends, it is easier to not do rather than to do. Sometimes it is easier to do the things that come to us first instead of stopping to think and pray first. Friends, the light is the opposite of those things. The light is what inspires us to act. The light inspires us to do and not sit on the sidelines as a bystander. The light brings us together. And the light will shine bright if you will, if you will open your eyes and seek it out. Here's the final thought. Another way of looking, another way of looking at the star is almost like a story of following the rainbow, looking for that pot of gold on the other end. If you think about it, if you follow all the way to the other end, what treasures will you have? What kind of a journey will you have if you follow Christ? If you seek out that light, that star. <clears throat> Friends, let us give of ourselves like the Magi gave of their gold, their frankincense and myrrh. Let's give of ourselves and our time. Let us be faithful to God, always looking for that beautiful star of Bethlehem. Amen.
Jesus. Remember that God loves you. God loves you so much that he sent a light into this world to guide you through the darkness. To get rid of the darkness so that way you could see which way to go. So you could be safe. So you could be guided safely to home. As you go out this day, remember to seek out that star and to let the light within you, the light of Jesus, shine. Because you too can be a beacon in the darkness because God can use you for great things. Go in peace. Serve the Lord always. Give glory and thanks to God. And friends, Happy New Year. Amen. Amen.